Is life a bowl of cherries? <laughs> you heard that expression. I don't know. It's a favorite uh, food of a lot of people out there, me included. And uh, I'm going to go through and talk about three things about cherries. One is, a, is an amazing cherry hack that I just uh, figured out at 64 years of age. You can be like, Joe, did you, were you raised like under a rock? Number two, I want to go through and tell about some things you can pair cherries with. I like eating them plain, but guess what? Once in a while, I like to dip them in some things. We'll talk about that. So cool. And the last thing is nutritional value of cherries. I'm going to spend a little time on that. And there's a bonus section coming up at the end of this that I'm going to tag on. <laughs> Every time I think of cherries, I think about a story with my grandmother. The title of the, of the uh, video clip is going to be uh, Why Stealing Cherries from My Grandmother's Tree Was the Pits. <laughs> It's pretty cute. But anyway, let's go through. I want to talk first about uh, the hack. And this for me, <laughs> I'm kind of a simple person, but uh, my uh, my son got this for his daughter. It's a cherry pitter, and she started using it, and she uh, ended up pitting the whole basket of cherries. But watch this bad boy. Boom! Kicks it right out, right? So I don't know about you, but look how nice that hole is. Nice and uniform. It looks like a regular cherry. And, of course, when you put them in a bowl and people go to get them, you say, hey, those are all pitted. Here's why. Here's the reason for the hack. This guy does not like sitting at a party, eating cherries and then spitting in his hand, looking like I'm like, I don't know, throwing up. Uh, I hate it. So a lot of times I would avoid cherries. I thought, you know, you can't really look like you're, you know, a civilized person when you're spitting in your hand all day. So anything that I have to spit out, like grapes or anything with their seeds, I just don't like it. So the whole idea here is to get a cherry pitter. They're cheap and they're fun. Like I said, my granddaughter went through a whole bunch a whole bowl full and pitted every one of them so they don't hold up so well when you do that but tell you what for dessert and just in, you know when you're serving these they're gonna love the fact that they're pitted and if they know that you'll end up not having none left right so pairing here's what you want to do about a dinner party this is what we do i sometimes put out some chocolate uh pudding or other type of things they could dip it in some people like chocolate syrup there's a lot of different uh, things you could do with that so think about how you can use chocolate and jerry, you know, so especially when they have control over. I like panna cotta, cheesecake. I like using silky custards. I like using, I really like using yogurt. And I'll do that, especially Greek yogurt, and uh, maybe with a little bit of sweetener uh, in the yogurt, but that's delish. Here's one, sweet uh, tangy uh, tango, where you actually take some lemon zest uh, and put it in there in, in a tart uh, aspect to the, Cherry is going to be outstanding. How about this? Some nuts. Cherry on cookies. You can get biscotti uh, and you can sprinkle them in. So many cool things to do. Now, nutrition value is amazing because nutrition value of these is like the macros in this. It's low in fat and cholesterol, of course. Uh, but in 154 grams, which is about a cup, there's 94 calories. So this is probably less than a cup. But 94 calories isn't bad, right? Uh, one gram of protein and less than one gram of fat so they're good now the biggest thing though is the mac it's not the macros the micros they're very very heavy with with micros and one of the biggest thing is it's got vitamin c of course a k and a range of b vitamins all help with the moon, immune function right uh minerals they got some potassium magnesium and copper so good things muscle nerve function etc so they got a decent amount of minerals the antioxidant powerhouse though is one of the things that makes them the best and they have anthocyanins. Now, anthocyanins have been found to give them, that's where you get that red color from, but those really are powerful antioxidants. So again, like blueberries, like raspberries, that antioxidant punch is so important. So with that comes anti-inflammatory because of the anthocyanins, yeah, cyan, anthocyanins and also flavonoids. Flavonoids, another big anti-inflammatory, huge. So I'm gonna recommend, uh, I know you love cherries, but do yourself a favor, <laughs> get yourself one of these, and you'll be uh, you'll be serving them more. We had a big basket full of these uh, uh, just a few days ago, and uh, I've been putting them in my smoothies. I've been eating them just plain. I've been putting them in yogurt. I've been put. It's just so phenomenal. So, until next video podcast, stay healthy. Find a way to get into your cherry hacks and uh, get stronger. Here's a quick story about cherries. I lived. Uh, grew up next to my grandmother. She was just a, a, a short walk away from the house. And she, of course, was there all her life. I think 80 years of her life, she lived 104. Uh, and she grew everything. She grew her, she had a massive garden. She had fruit trees. And she loved her peaches, her pears, her apples, but her prizes were her cherries and grapes. 
And here's the thing about grandma. She was a very giving person. I came to give people produce and, and fruit. She canned a lot of stuff, but she did give a lot away. But when it came to the first pickings of anything, she was a little bit uh, like, you don't get those. Now, she had to keep the birds away from the cherries, so she put up all these plates to keep the birds away. But there was another pest that she was worried about and that she was always on guard about, and that was her 25 grandchildren at the time, that when they came over, somebody like me that lived next door, <laughs> were a constant threat to the cherries and to the grapes. So she would always tell us, don't touch those until they're ready. Don't pick those until I tell you. You can't have them until I, you know, I, I say you can. So, you know, when you're a kid, you know, eight, nine, 10 years old, maybe a little older, I think I was, I think I was more like 10 or 11 or 12. I used to go there and I'd look in the morning at those beautiful cherries and she'd get really upset if you picked the ones that were not ripe yet on the bottom, but also really upset if you picked them before they were ready. And grandma says, you know, they weren't just supposed to be red, they're supposed to be black black cherries and they had to get really big so we'd be dying but what happened is one day I said you know what I really want cherries this morning grandma's not awake yet I think so I snuck over and I climbed up the tree so I figured she won't see me on the ground I'm gonna start you know going after it so I started gorging myself just then I see her come out of the house and I'm like oh crap she's walking towards me and at the bottom there's a dog house where she had a dog and the dog was kind of like mine his own business so she starts feeding the dog and she starts walking away. So I didn't say a word. I was so quiet. She gets back to the house, but my little snitch cousin Patricia came out and she saw me up there. She said, Grandma Tiny, Joey's up in that tree eating your cherries. And OMG, she walked over and for an 85 year old, and let me tell you, she used some words that I've heard before but not so much in that combination and not out of her mouth all the time. So she said, you get blankety blank down there right now, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, nope, I'm not going down now. Uh, she goes, I'm gonna tell your father. So after five minutes of yelling back and forth at me, and I'm just sitting up there, you know, froze, she, uh, she went back in the house. And let me tell you, uh, there was some consequences to my action. Uh, my father uh, didn't read Dr. Spock too much, but uh, he didn't give me a big whooping, but let's just say that I had some restrictions after that. I was put on a little bit of a house arrest because I really upset his mother, my grandmother. But then here's the, here's the thing though, uh, that I wanted to share with you about that is that a couple weeks later, I said, now dad, I don't understand. You told me some stories about some mischief you used to get into and how your, your mother, grandma used to be upset when you drove the old Model T up the hill and down and how you and Uncle Pat used to do all this stuff. He goes, yeah, of course. We got into trouble. We made mischief. Here's the difference. You ain't that bright. You did something where you were above the radar and she saw you because you didn't think about the fact that you do things when grandma's not around because her eyes and ears are everywhere, son. So all I'm going to tell you is don't do it again, but especially don't get caught again. So <laughs> he kind of chuckled a little bit. So I felt like, uh, man, you know what? That was uh, something I'll never forget. And every time I see a cherry, I think about that story. So... Hope, uh, hope you can relate to that. Some things you've done in your life where you got into mischief and later on you kind of laughed about it and the people that were <laughs> so upset. I, I remember my grandma lived 104 when she was over 100 years old. She'd bring this story up all the time. Say, yeah, Joey, remember the time I caught you up in there stealing my cherries? I go, yeah, grandma. Uh, I wish you'd forget because you forgot a lot of other things. But anyway, hope that gave you a laugh. And until next video podcast, stay healthy.